Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm really excited to start this series on programming. I think programming basics are something that anyone who works with computers really uh, should have a handle on. I have done temp jobs before doing data entry that I could have automated in 20 minutes had I known how to program back in the day. And likewise, if you're dealing with system administration or you know, websites or other stuff, it's really, really useful to know how to program. I'm doing this in the context of a Linux system administration course. But again, I just want to reiterate, coding is, I think, useful for almost anyone. So really, programming teaches you how to think about how a process works. So it gets you to think about what steps are needed to make that process happen, whether that's, you know, searching for something like Google does or modifying data or, or getting running some statistical analysis on data that you've got or going out and getting 50 web pages and monitoring them for changes or writing a game or writing a website or a web application like Facebook or other things that keep getting bought for 5 million to, you know, 10 billion. There's so much you could do with it but it really teaches you how to think about processes and how to think about designing the language that you use to solve a problem. That might be too philosophical for now, but just there I said it. Why am I doing Ruby in a system administration course? I would agree with all those people that are gonna write angry comments and say, you should be doing Bash or you should be doing Python. And I agree, Bash and Python are probably the two like at this point, most important languages for a system administrator to know. Ruby is a close third because of things like um, configuration management tools like Puppet. And for security, stuff like Metasploit is written as sort of a Ruby framework. So Ruby is quite useful. I think it's useful in and of itself. That's why I'm even doing this in Ruby. But the reason I'm choosing Ruby before I cover things like Python or Bash, which I will cover in detail, is Ruby has the best syntax, um, the most readable syntax for beginners that I've ever seen. So instead of spending a lot of time on talking about what the hell we're typing in, a lot of it's gonna be self-explanatory. And that's really important for people who are learning the concepts. To write good scripts and good programs in the end, you need to learn concepts. There are programming concepts, such as what are variables, how do loops and conditionals work, on and on, all the way to things like, how do I properly organize my code? What should I really be naming my variables so that other people can read them? Some of the greatest programming minds uh, ever, arguably, have said things like, code is primarily for humans to understand and only incidentally for machines to execute, and other strange things like that. So why would readability of your code be more important than whether it's the fastest code for that problem or what have you. Well, it's because, especially in a system administration context, when you leave scripts behind, um, you know, when you write a script, even if you're telling yourself, oh, this is just gonna be temporary, I'm gonna make a much better version of this next week, you will never go make a better version of it next week because you will have other problems next week that you will write more scripts to solve. It is not uncommon when you get a new system administration job that you walk in and start looking at these sort of library of scripts that are being used to do various tasks on the network or on a system and be absolutely horrified because it's 300 terribly written scripts with no comments and no, there's just, you ha really have to figure it out from scratch again and you might as well just write it from scratch. What I want is for people who see this course and then become system administrators uh, to not have the people that come after you want to find you and kill you. So we're going to leave behind good code and that kind of code is also just much easier to deal with for yourself because if you can't read something that you wrote six months ago to solve a problem, then you're really starting from scratch and you're wasting your own time. So these coding principles are very easy to learn um, with any language and they're common to all languages. So that's why we're starting with Ruby because Ruby, I think, is the easiest language for a beginner to learn. It has beautiful syntax. It is extremely intuitive in many ways and it's consistent. There are so few special cases in Ruby that a beginner will ever touch that I can talk in absolutes. To a beginner, Ruby is sort of, I think, the, the perfect language. I started with Bash and with Python, and I have since, after programming Ruby, programmed um, various Lisps, like Clojure, um, Scheme, 
JavaScript, uh, some Java, unfortunately, uh, some C, et cetera, et cetera. I think Ruby is the best one to start with. So that's why I'm starting with it here. It also is very useful for a whole bunch of things from web development to um, scripting on a system to uh, configuration management or automation. A lot of large tools are built around Ruby, like I mentioned before. Um, so it gives you a lot of options. And also it's really centrally in a way built around object orientation. Everything in Ruby is an object. There are really no special cases. And that prepares you for being efficient in lots of other languages. And if you ever decide to become a developer or programmer, that is a useful thing to have as much experience with as possible, thinking in an object-oriented way. It, on the other hand, has lots of utilities for programming functionally in a functional style or an imperative style. So if you want to play with those alternate styles of programming, you can. I happen to love functional programming. So that's my qualification for why we're doing this with Ruby and what's going to happen. You're going to learn the basics that you need to code in any language. And uh, after that, we're going to take, in this course, a nice look at Bash, but you'll already have Ruby under your belt. And Bash will be a lot quicker to learn than it would be if you learned it as your first language. So there you go. I'm going to groom you to become a star programmer if you want, or just an excellent scripter for system administration type work. But this will make you much more valuable, no matter what you decide to do.